So some of the videos that I do this year will be focused on the uh, Puduk chip and um, now that I've got a working program or two, this is actually the PFS154. So in particular, I'm going to start with that. And, um, you know, as usual, um, it's just going to be at the start some blinkies because I need to make sure I get the timing right and uh, also the connections right before I start doing some more with it. And I'm not as familiar in the programming of this. In fact, it's fair to say I'm not familiar at all with the programming of this device compared to, for instance, something like the A Tiny 13. I'd like to get to the point where I'm doing, you know, a fair bit in assembler, but we're a very long way away from that. So um, I'm just going to have a look at the programming to start with to show you what this program does and how it came to be, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at what it actually does. So here's a modification of the code which comes with the free PTK project. So just going to go through a little bit of the uh, of what's there and what I changed. So the includes are pretty important. So you need to make sure that you've got the includes, you know, in either pointing at them or in the directory, just one above uh, where they're expected. Uh, I had in, I changed the um, the way this code is written so that it addresses the actual registers themselves, which is the way I prefer to do it. But I left the original. Um, code there uh, and this is the same with uh, just setting up the initial uh, making sure that it's an output and making sure that the the thing starts as off then it just turns on and off I changed the timing slightly so I could tell uh, when it was on and when it was off so 200 and 1200 milliseconds and uh, finally this is the uh, the startup code which calibrates the system clock not real sure what's going on here got a little bit of exploration to do with this entire code and I'm going to try and convert as much as possible uh, over time to assembly so that it makes more sense to me. But uh, that's the code. Let's see how it works. All right, so uh, let's give it five volts. And uh, you can see from this uh, LED, what this LED actually is, is it's on one side, uh, it's going positive and then it's actually draining via a resistor to ground on this side. So, yeah, so the interesting thing about this particular chip is that it drains. Um, so it is a sink, not a source for current. So that means, yeah, the timing is fine, but you just have to understand what's coming in. Now, ultimately what I want to do in, in, uh, in this little project anyway is to turn that into an output. And look, you know, there's probably lots of different ways of doing this, but I'm going to start with um, just a transistor. So I've got my old favourite, the um, SS8050. And we've got a 1K resistor. Put this on the other side. There we go. A 1K resistor going to the collector. Then we'll put a 1K resistor going to base from the signal. And then the emitter to ground. So let's see if I can fit this one in. Yep, all good. And then we should be able to turn this around. So now we've got positive VCC coming out of that arrangement, which is effectively now a not gate. And then if we can connect up this back to ground, it should flash at the same rate. All right, so it seems like it's doing the same thing, but in fact, What's happening now is that although this one is sinking, uh, the current is sinking to the chip, uh, this one here uh, is now uh, sourcing from here. So you can see that this has turned into a knock gate. So it is the opposite uh, signal. And uh, just to show you on this side, so this is coming out here and then it's going to ground here. So I can now use that to, let's say, drive um, something like a ULN2803 and um, yeah, let's get some significant current uh, coming through that. Okay, so 
We know that that's now uh, a rising edge coming out of here and uh, we can send that to the ULN2803, which is, uh, yeah, it's a lovely uh, chip. So it's a Darlington uh, array. So what that means is that um, we've got each of these inputs and outputs can sync. So then it, it's, it is a syncing situation here. Uh, this can sync down through uh, ground uh, 500 milliamps. So I've just tied the first two together here. So, uh, and in doing so, even though I've got the signal coming to the, uh, to the what is that, pin number seven there, um, it's actually the, I can draw the output from either side and that can be up to one amp. And if that wasn't enough, I just put another one in sequence. So that's the beauty of the array, that you can just keep uh, tying them together and, and syncing more and more current. So I've got 12 volts um, coming in and uh, that goes to what's called COM. And then what we need to do is we need to come out of COM. Let's go out of COM with a big old, uh, I think this is a 10, yeah, that's a 10 ohm, five watt uh, resistor. And then coming back with a, um, it's a three watt LED and it'll come back to the side to sink down to here. And then all we need to do, uh, I've, you notice that I've pointed this <laughs> down this way. Uh, it's got this, the um, uh, heat sink on the back uh, and uh, I'm actually pointing it down. Uh, I might, we might point it up towards the end, but just so we can see what's going on because it is pretty bright. So let's actually uh, start this up. There you go. And then you can see now that that is flashing. Uh, in sequence with this, which is sinking current, this is also sinking current, but it's actually coming from the signal which we have put through a NOT gate. I'll just put this one as well. It'll probably get drowned out. Um, wrong way around. No, that is the right way around. Just wrong hole there. There we go. Yeah, you, can, oh, you might be able to see that. Oh, yes, you can. Uh, yeah, so now we've got this uh, sinking to the PFS154. Uh, we have um, using the NOT gate. We've uh, reversed this signal, which provides the input for the ULN2803, which, irony, um, syncs current uh, from the 12 volt uh, via COM here, and then out to the resistor, out through the LED, and then back. So that's pretty good. Let's uh, let's blind everyone. Just yeah, that's that's not even that's not too bad. In fact, that's not too bad either. Um, bearing in mind that it's only on for a fifth of a second and off for 1.2 seconds. So this is just to, get, just to get the timing and all the connections right. So um, yeah, that's the circuit working for now. Um, next thing I'm going to do with this one, probably um, I'll give everyone a rest for a couple of weeks, I guess, and then we'll look at PWM and see if we can't get PWM working. See you next time.